Deborah, you've just published your 2024 outlook for the luxury goods sector, noting some of the challenges that the industry will face as we head into the first half of next year. Could you run through your thinking on expectations around price, volume and inventories? Yes, thanks. So about 8% sales growth in low teens uh, EPS is what we're after for the luxury goods sector in 23 and we switched to a year of normalized five to six percent growth in 2024 and perhaps similar for earnings may be slightly higher so um we saw a volume slowdown and more price sensitivity globally in 4q especially at the entry level and that drags into half 124 um, which we also know faces a tougher comparable base so we see limited ability to raise pricing. So we've written two to 3% on our estimates and two to 3% on volume. And that has to be led by high-end brands, quality mix, new designs, new stores and renovations, collaborations and projects. Um, balance sheets are robust. And so that allows for uh, much investment into 2024. When we look at inventories uh, for our area, it's of more, most concern to us. So we calculate um, luxury goods makers inventory average days are around 276. That seems high and it hardly moves on consensus estimates in the next two years. We feel there's a need to cut by about 7 to 10% or battle real heavy discount and an eroding margin. And we know that that then requires work to bring brand equity ranking back. And China is obviously a major factor in terms of the fortunes for the, uh, for the sector. What are you expecting for Chinese growth for next year? Well, we think it could finally surpass 2019 base in 2024, and it has the easiest time in 4Q23. Um, so we're looking for some of that to persist into the first quarter around New Year celebrations. And we do see China growing double digit in 24 after 20% growth for most for biggest brands in 2023. Um, but that still doesn't get us back for some brands to where we were in 2019. So we're looking for a consensus to improve in terms of China mix to around 25% of luxury goods by 2024 from 20% 20 in 2023. And then when we look at the luxury goods sector, it's divided in two, really. We've got the high end and then there's the more entry level or, or aspirational offering. How should investors think about choosing between the two? So the high end, more exclusive the brand, the more robust the share performance. And that's played out in the last couple of years. And again, this year, uh, Hermes and Brunella Cuccinelli, um, that's reflected also though in forward PEs, they exceed 40 times. Yet there are those um, whose pricing propositions, e.g. Pandora, um, combined with innovation and new designs and new store feel resonate well with gifting on a budget. So it's about really looking brand by brand into 2024. We would say earnings cuts for the investor are baked in. We've seen quite a few earnings um, reductions through the last quarter uh, with the poor 3Q. Um, and that's seen even the top six outside of Hermes uh, reduce earnings on consensus from five to 13%. We're looking for high cash piles that can drive investment. Um, companies which could have struggled for the longer term, such as Capri, which owns Michael Kors, has been bought out. And we're expecting more digital to drive growth next year too. Uh, Deborah, really appreciate you taking the time to go through your outlook. Uh, I think a lot of people will be interested in this space as well. Um, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.